This video is brought to you by 1Password. What's going on guys, this is Sam, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at over 25 hidden features and other changes inside of iOS 12. Now, of course, there are more than just 25 hidden features and changes, but I wanna focus on the big ones in this video. So first up is better performance in iOS 12. This isn't something that you're probably gonna notice instantaneously, but if you use the device for just a couple of minutes, in beta one, I ran Geekbench, I did a speed test. If you missed it, I'll link it up in the top right-hand corner of the screen and found out that at least on the iPhone 8, iOS 12 actually performs better than the public release version right now of iOS 11, which is iOS 11.4. I mean, the camera launch is incredibly fast for beta one. News is also very speedy. Music, a lot of the apps I tested just launched faster now, and that's because Apple doubled down on performance and security this year, rather than doing a ton of giant features and changes. Next up, there is a new wallpaper. If you're on iOS 12, you can head over to settings, wallpaper, choose a new wallpaper still. You'll find it right here up in the top left-hand corner of the screen and you can tap on it. It's very, very cool looking. I'm a huge fan of this one. I like it a lot better than the iOS 11 stock wallpaper from last year. You've got some nice blues and whites up here, reds, oranges, pinks in the middle, and then greens and blues down at the very bottom. Now, if you don't have the iOS 12 beta and you're just watching this video on something like iOS 11, but still want the wallpaper, I'll leave a link to my website down below in the description where you can run this on any device, iPhone or iPad. If we head over to Control Center and you 3D touch on the Do Not Disturb toggle, you have some new options this year. I also covered this extensively in a video earlier today, also linked up in the top right hand corner of the screen. You can now do not disturb for a certain amount of time rather than scheduling it or manually enable or disabling it. You can do for one hour until tomorrow morning or until a certain time. That does change based on the time of day, I believe. And then also until you leave a location. So maybe until I left my house, I wanted to do not disturb. But that could also be really useful if you were at work. You could do not disturb until you left work every day just so you wouldn't be distracted by your phone. In the Photos app, there is a new search tab right here. You can search for photos, people's places, or even events. Apple claims that with iOS 12, you can search for certain events. So I'm gonna test it out. I'm gonna type in concert and see if it comes up with anything. Concerts. Uh, came up with a concert hall, and amazingly, it actually did find my concert video from a Portugal The Man concert almost uh, a year ago today, which is crazy. I don't know how Apple actually identified that, but that's really cool. In iOS 12, you can search for things like concerts, and it actually shows up like this. Also new in photos is a For You tab right here. This one's kind of interesting. It just automatically suggests events that you might want to look at. Uh, it'll show shared album activity as well. And on stage, Apple demoed a lot about what this could do, but I've never found Apple's AI to be that great at suggesting what I want to see. Rumor has it that in iOS 13 that could get better with the Photos app, but this is what we've got right now for you in iOS 12. Now out of this entire list, I think the number one feature I'm most excited to see is group FaceTime. But in the future, you can actually group FaceTime with, get this, up to 32 people at one time on the same call. I'm absolutely blown away that Apple was able to achieve that. I thought Apple was going to start out slow with group FaceTime, you know, maybe three or four people at a time. No, they went straight to 32 people at once. You can see these screenshots right now that are on apple.com in the short video that when it works, it looks like it's going to be incredible. You've got a crazy black UI with like pictures and images of people talking, floating above it, but I really like it. On the iPhone 10, you no longer have to press and hold to delete things. You can just swipe up now like that. It was kind of a big annoyance in iOS 11. You had tap and hold and then a little minus icon would come up. Now in iOS 12, you no longer have to do that. You can just swipe through all your apps at your own desire and it doesn't take a long time like it used to in iOS 11. Here's one of the new apps in iOS 12 right here. It's called Measure and as the name implies, it allows you to measure things using augmented reality. So to start it, you'll have to move it around, but when it actually works, it's incredibly cool. Here's some B-roll that I shot. The animations are also fantastic. It allows you to point pointed at something rectangular and you can actually measure in real time and see the length or width or depth of something, which is pretty cool. There's a number of apps on the App Store that already do this, but having this built right into iOS 12 is very cool. Also a level right here because it looks like Apple has removed this from the Compass app. Next up is a huge Siri upgrade in iOS 12 called Shortcuts. This is super cool. Let me show you how it works. So it says iOS 12 preview Apple. This is going to automatically suggest things that you do frequently that you can now assign an action with Siri. So this is the official iOS 12 page on Apple's website. Apple notices I'm a YouTuber. I go there a lot. So if I tap plus, it says you can say something like iOS 12 preview Apple. So I'm going to record me saying iOS 12 features. iOS 12 features. Now watch what happens. iOS 12 features. 
it takes me over to Safari just like I set up, and that is a custom action that I just assigned with Siri. I can now view this web page or any other web page that you want by configuring this properly. That's a very cool feature. Siri got a lot more powerful, although I don't know if the intelligence has changed that much from iOS 11 to iOS 12. Before moving on to the next feature, I want to thank 1Password for sponsoring today's video and making it possible. If you've ever logged into anywhere online, you should be using 1Password. It's an online secure password manager for all of your logins, credit cards, you can write secure notes and store pretty much anything else in this sole place. And it's all locked behind one master password that you know and you alone. I seriously love 1Password. I use it every single day and I know you'll love it as well. So if you head down below to the description to onepasswordcom slash WWDC18, you can get three months of 1Password for free and start staying safer online today. No update, of course, is complete without new iPad features. I'm gonna show you some new stuff on the iPad. The status bar has been reorganized. Time is no longer in the middle and you get the date up here and you've got your control center stuff over here on the right. If you swipe down, you can access control center just like that. A bit of a redesign with control center on iOS 12. Some other big stuff on the iPad. You've got books here, that redesign is present, but voice memos, that is finally on the iPad. Calculator, still not here with iOS 12. I don't know what Apple is doing. They brought voice memos. They even brought the completely revamped Stocks app. With all these new features, we've got that on the iPad. It looks incredible. I really like how it looks on the iPhone as well, but we still do not have the calculator app on the iPad. Another change in Apple's apparent preparation for releasing the Face ID enabled iPad is iPhone 10 like gestures on the iPad. So if we go to the app store, watch what happens when I swipe up. I can close out of the app just like that. The gestures are amazing. They're so fluid, just like they are on the iPhone 10. You've got Control Center on the right, also an iPhone 10 like feature. And I think Apple just did a great job adding these gestures. Let's see if I swipe them and hold. That brings you into multitasking and Control Center is no longer there. Very cool features, huge fan of the changes on the iPad. The Stocks app got a huge upgrade in iOS 12, as you can see right here. We got an all new design, market news, Apple news is directly integrated inside of this app, mostly business stories, uh, and it's gonna sync on iCloud, which is very, very cool. Down below, you do have that Apple news integration that I previewed a second ago. It's gonna show you market-related topics. I also like this ticker up here at the very top. You can scroll, very nice touch, and the lines here are also very cool. There have been a lot of improvements to voice messages memos in iOS 12. Just like the Stocks app got a redesign, we have a new icon for voice memos. Looks a little bit different, but largely the same. It just looks like there's some red there and a blue line, but I do like the new design. There's also a completely redesigned version here. A lot of access your location. Let's go ahead. When you record, this is cool. It doesn't take up your entire screen unless you want it to. Another great feature with this version of the Voice Memos app is that it is iCloud compatible. So finally, all your voice memos will sync across all your devices. And Voice Memos is also available just like Apple News is now on the Mac with Mac OS 10.14 at Mojave. I haven't made any videos on that just yet, but Mac also got a huge upgrade this year alongside iOS 12. The name was accidentally changed back in iOS 11.3 and beta 1 to books. Apple was apparently testing a name change and in iOS 12 we not only got a name change from iBooks to Apple Books we also have a completely new design here this is a very nice UI right here welcome to Apple Books discover escape grow at the bottom we have reading now library bookstore audiobooks and search has its own tab this looks pretty much rebuilt from the ground up I thought it would look a little bit more similar to the iOS App Store but it is a little bit different. Uh, lots of shadows here though. I think this honestly looks beautiful and I'm sure it will definitely have a positive impact on book sales. This one technically isn't a feature in iOS 12, but it is in the iOS 12 version of CarPlay. Third-party maps applications like Google Maps and presumably Waze will be supported. Moving on to this next feature, it is one of the greatest changes in iOS 12, grouped notifications. In the past on iOS 11, whenever you had a lot of notifications, you know what would happen. Your lock screen would get cluttered, notification center was a disaster and there was really no easy way to sort them. Now they are all sorted by application. Right here I got YouTube. I can view all my YouTube stuff in the exact same spot. All you should know about this is that it's an insanely good feature, something that people have been waiting on for a very long time, and it's finally here for users in iOS 12. With the new notifications options in iOS 12, you can now 3D touch on a notification and then tap on these three dots and adjust all these options right here. Deliver quietly, if I tap that, it means it will only deliver it to Notification Center, it'll show a badge icon, but it will not present banners or play a sound. You can turn off notifications or head over to settings. All of this you can manage 
on the fly rather than having to go to settings to change everything like you did in iOS 11. You probably noticed that as soon as I went to the settings app, there is a new tab here. It's called screen time. It's a little hourglass. And as the name implies, could be scary, could be very heartwarming. It'll show you how long you've been on your iOS device. You can see it just updated. I'm 30 minutes above average today, and that is because, of course, iOS 12 came out. I've been staring at the screens constantly. Downtime, you can schedule time away. App limits, you can actually set time limits for certain applications. All this stuff is new, was not present in iOS 11. You can choose apps you always wanna allow no matter what, and then content and privacy. If you have children, you wanna make sure you know what they're using or what they're doing on their phones you can see everything that someone does on their phone through here. Now you can't see like what you're doing exactly in a lot of places, I don't think. For example, Safari, I don't think you can view history or anything like that, but you can see applications, how long they're being used, what applications are being used, and even a graph of when the applications are being used. So pretty intense stuff here. Inside of Do Not Disturb, there is something new in iOS 12 called bedtime mode. When you turn this on, hopefully it works on the first try. I was having some issues earlier. Yep, right here, it will turn your screen pretty much completely black and notifications will continue to come on your phone. It's not like you won't receive notifications, but Apple highlighted that it's probably not the best thing for you to wake up in the middle of the night, maybe check the time on your phone, and then see a ton of stuff. A very bright screen. This is dark, so that's pretty cool. I think I'll definitely be using that just because I've never been a fan of using my phone in the middle of the night after I've already gone to sleep. Inside of Messages, there is a new Animoji icon right here in addition to some new Animojis and a completely new Animoji picker. Lots of stuff going on. Got a new Welcome to Animoji page the first time you view it. Here are the new ones in iOS 12. You have Koala, Tiger, T-Rex, and Ghost, and you can also create something called a Memoji. We'll talk about that in one second. So right here, let's go ahead and check out the other ones before we design our own Memoji. In iOS 12, the new ones are below you. Actually, I have to scroll down a little bit. Tiger right here, very cool tracking is great as always. You've got Koala, <laughs> very buck tooth like I enjoy it. And then you've got T-Rex. Okay, T-Rex, I said in a different video that I, Tiger was my favorite, but T-Rex just looks so cool, so menacing. And then Ghost right here as well. Now in iOS 12, you can also do this, and I don't know how I feel about it, but you can stick out your tongue and actually do whatever you want with your tongue using an emoji. It's very cool. I, I don't know, I kind of like it. It's a little bit creepy. Now I want to show you the Memoji functionality. You can now become your own an emoji. Let's go ahead and get started. The controls here are ridiculous. I'm going to try to make this look as close to me as I can. Don't have any freckles. Chin, wow, you can adjust all this stuff. That's super blocky. I'm just going to leave it on the default. Eyewear, uh, I'm not going to put any of my glasses on right now, but of course, Howdy, y'all. Did I just stereotype every person who wears a cowboy hat? Probably. Okay, this is really cool. I didn't think it was gonna be as fun as it was, but this is cool. There's a ton of different head stuff in here. Um, wow, I'm really blown away. I don't think Samsung's AR, AR emoji even came close. And I think you can, wow, you can adjust the color of all of it here as well. It's blowing my mind. This is incredible. The last iOS 12 feature I wanna show you, at least in this video, is that you can now add more faces for Face ID. Under appearances, it says set up alternate appearance. You can now scan your face a different time if you look different on different days, or of course that could be used to set up someone else's face to unlock your iPhone. So if you had a significant other or someone that you really wanted to give secure access to your iOS device in addition to you, you can do that now. Those are all the iOS 12 features that I wanna show you in this video. I think Apple did a great job this year. As always, if you enjoyed the video, if you learned something new, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, hit subscribe for more iOS 12 videos in the future. If you wanna help support the channel, as always, you can head over to shop.iupdateos.com to buy a t-shirt or go over to patreon.com slash update. Any support there is always seriously appreciated. For now, I've been Sam. I hope all of you are doing great, and I will talk to you in my next video.